In section 8.8, .8, we're going to talk about vectors. And uh, we give you some terminology. And again, this is just kind of an introduction to vectors. You'll do more work with them in other math classes or physics classes later. OK, so a vector, say you have a boat, you know, and it leaves a port and it travels, I don't know, 10 miles. And then it's someplace in the ocean, say. Well, you can think of that as a vector, but if you came back and looked at my picture, you wouldn't know where the port was and which direction the boat was going in. And so we have to think of a vector as what's called a directed line segment. And to, so we mean by that that there's a particular length to the line segment, you know, a beginning and an end, but it's going in a particular direction because we want to know which way the boat's going. So if this was the port P, you know, starting here, and it's going this way, we can put an arrow, usually it's a straight line, uh, we can put an arrow to show which way it's going, and maybe we'll call the end point Q. So that's kind of common to use P and Q for the two points. But the initial point in this case would be P, or where it started from. And the terminal point would be Q, where it ended. And we know which one's the initial point and which one's the terminal point because of the arrow drawn on the vector. That shows which way it's going. The magnitude of a vector is the length of the vector. So I had said 10 miles, right? So in my case, the length would be 10 miles. That would be the magnitude, then, of the vector. And it's going in the direction that I have it drawn. OK, so notation for vectors. You're going to use a lowercase letter. A lot of times they'll use V and they'll use W. And they're italicized, OK? Um, they will write them in bold. You'll see it done that way sometimes. Or they'll put an arrow above it to indicate that it's a vector. So those are different ways that they can show the vector notation. OK, uh, let's see what else have I left out. Oh, um, if you have a vector, you can draw it on a grid. If you have a vector, that's here, starting at the origin, and then it goes a particular direction. And say this is it's ending at AB. That is said to be a vector. Try to draw my arrow. The vector is in standard position. I think I have that written beneath. So if the initial point is 0, 0, you can think of it that way. Initial point is 0, 0. Now, when you have it in standard uh, position, there's a notation that goes with it. And it looks like this. So they're kind of these, I don't know what you'd call them, some kind of bracket. Anyway, um, that indicates that the vector is in standard position, or the initial point is at the origin, and then it's going in a particular direction and ending, the terminal point would be AB, OK? Now, you can have a, a vector. You know, let's say we have a vector uh, going this way. And, you know, we could have coordinates for that point. Maybe we have um, the initial point is x1 comma y1. And then it ends up here at x2, comma, y2. And so those could be diff you know, different points, a and b, or uh, c or d, or p or q, you know, something like that. Anyway, if you want to find the vector in standard position to do that, you take x sub 2 minus x sub 1, comma, y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So we've seen that type of thing before, but that puts it in standard position. And what you're doing is you're picking up that vector that you have drawn, 
and you're moving it you know, down here. Um, I'll try to draw it accurately here. So it's like you picked that orange vector up and you moved it to where the green vector is. And then it orients it so that the initial point is at the origin. Okay, so that's just an introduction to vectors.